don't you love it when things go wrong uh, well what we're having a little bit of an issue with is temperature the hot end go to the nozzle we'll just put a little bit of temperature on there is not much we'll take it up to 100 that'll do and one more and you can see we're set at 29 and we wait and wait and wait and nothing happens so we've uh, got to now do some diagnosing to find out where the problem is now after you've tested that all the wires are you know, nice and tight and there's nothing loose the next thing you do is you grab a uh, heat gun or you can use a um, like a hairdryer and you give it a blast up under this area here of the actual hot end and if you see the temperature rise on the control panel you know then that it's not the thermistor and we can get on with our diagnosis and look elsewhere I'll show you in a second and the temperature as you can see is rising so we go to the next um, step to check uh, to see if we can find a solution so we take the actual casing off this we pop it to the side the next thing we do is we use a multimeter now it doesn't matter how old it is mine is over 40 odd years old so it's a pretty ancient unit still works perfect as you can see that's all i care about now what we're testing for is resistance in the actual um, heater cartridge so we just strip a bit of wire um, anywhere along the, the length of it doesn't matter we touch the two wires and if we see resistance and no power is turned on then we've got a short somewhere and that indicates the main board and that is not a good thing that means we're up for a new main board um, so hopefully that's not going to be the case now once we do the test and we don't get any uh, resistance we then change to DC and uh, obviously there's no power going through the DC so nothing's going to happen and once we get the controller powered up and uh, we put a bit of temperature onto it, we set the temperature to maybe 100 or whatever, doesn't matter, we now have a voltage going through those wires. So by touching the two wires again that we've already exposed, and if we get a reading on the meter itself, that would indicate that there is a fault with the ceramic cartridge and it needs replacing. Carefully touch these wires without shorting anything, I hope. That's working. We now adjust it to obviously a bit of DC voltage. You can see we're getting a bit of a reading there. So that's telling me that we've got uh, voltage going through to the uh, hot end itself, to the cartridge. So we can only assume it's a dud cartridge. So yes, I will replace it. Okay, I've disconnected the hot end from the printer. Now, in here, just in this area here, there's a little tiny hex nut, and that controls uh, the cartridge, so it'll stop it from coming in and out. I've just got to puncture a hole through there and uh, release it, which I'll do. Yeah, I eventually managed to get that out and uh, what I finished up doing I had to put this into a vise and uh, I put a little basically a little bolt over the top of that and then tapped it with a hammer and it knocked out the other side so yeah that was a very very tight fit but uh, anyway it's out and uh, all I've got to do now is rewire a spare I just happened to have a couple of them on hand funny about that now all I'm going to be doing is uh, pulling back this cable and uh, it stretches out quite nicely and that'll give me plenty of room I'll pull it up a bit more and uh, we'll cut a, a length out of it I'm just stretching the cable up the uh, bit more That's a that's a good length. That'll do it. And I'll clip it um, up in here somewhere. Probably probably about there will do it. Uh, where's my clippers? Ah, oh, there they are. So I just use this, slice it through, 
the old one is now history. So we've got to strip the wires on the replacement part. Of course on the cable I've just got there. So here we go. Oh, about that will do. And again about the same on the other side on that one. Yeah about that. Give it a bit of a twist. Same on the side. Now what we do, the length of that that I've just uh, cut off, we grab the replacement one. Of course I've got to unwind it first so uh, the idea is that the replacement one will be the same length as this which I'll cut in a second. Okay I've unraveled the, uh, the lead that's the old one, that's the new one. We wind him out to about the same length, which is about there. And we just simply cut through. And uh, that's it. And of course, make certain you don't put the, uh, the old one you've taken off back on, because that's uh, defeating the purpose, of course. That's the new one. Same thing, you just simply take the... Um, strip the wire off the back here a bit. Uh, I'll give or take about that. Old. Oops. Oh, slot, that slot, yeah about that, and the same on this one, give or take, oops, get into the right slot, about there, I'll give it a bit of a twist, same on the other side, and uh, before I wind these together, I'll be popping a little bit of uh, shrink wrap over the top, uh, so I'll stick that one down there, same on the other side. Okay, so we've got a bit of shrink wrap for later. And it doesn't really matter which way goes these go because there's no right or wrong with them, which is handy. I'll just give them a bit of a twist. I will be soldering them in a second. Just add a bit more solder to that that particular wire there that should do the job at least I hope so okay now it's time to pop a bit of shrink wrap over do both get in the middle and uh, get my little device here up to temperature which it is so the last thing you want are these wires obviously touching it would be a little bit of a disaster now all we have to do the uh, wires have cooled down we just simply pull the uh, protective elastic sort of cover over the top again just thread him over and uh, we are done and uh, there we are it's all all pulled over and uh, hidden the actual join you can just see it through there that's where the join is so it's uh, clear of the hot end now it's just a matter of reassembling all this and uh, hopefully uh, it'll work and uh, don't forget to wrap the uh, the actual cartridge now I've uh, just tightened up the two little nuts here um, make certain that they're okay okay that's it and now just simply to put the the fan shroud back over and uh, we'll fire it up and see what the result is hopefully it'll work okay now for the all-important test after I've assembled everything we'll now check to see if the nozzle heats up now we'll take it up to 210 will do 
and let's have a look and there she goes yep it's definitely going up so problem solved problem fixed and uh, just for the sake of $1.20 that's all it was I'll just zoom back out wrong way <laughs> put this thing right one day just for the sake of that replacement little cable $1.20 and my printer was offline that is not a <laughs> not a good thing for the sake of one I keep em emphasizing $1.20 carry spare parts so I've got a few of these now hanging around just in case and that uh, will zoom back into the temperature to see she's going and you can see she's definitely going up so problem solved problem fixed and uh, I'll get on with printing shortly oh before I forget thanks for watching